Mac the Knife. <laughs> so much about the castings, it's more just about the learning experiences and making the mistakes of learning on these pieces and not on the final casting that's going to be on my channel in a couple of weeks. So I've already talked about what I learned doing the first casting, mainly about uh, the mesh and using a mould release. 
Uh, but I also learned a lot casting this uh, second drill case. So there's a lot of air bubbles throughout the whole casting. So what I've learned is I need to make sure I vibrate the mould all the way through the pouring process and not just at the end so that those air bubbles can escape. Uh, but I've also noticed that uh, the concrete is dried with a slightly pink tinge to it. So what I've done is I've done some researching about concrete and I found a concrete that I'm pretty happy with. So I did a few different attempts with this concrete just to get my method down. So the first thing I needed to work out was what mould release to use. With number one, I just used a simple furniture wax. And with number two, I used the furniture wax and grease. And the result of this was that the furniture wax was the winner because the grease left some residue on the concrete. Having done the mould release, I moved on to three, which is just adding a sealer to the concrete. You'll notice with all three of these, there's a lot of air bubbles in the concrete. And that's just because I didn't add enough water to the mix, so I couldn't vibrate these air bubbles out in time. So I consequently did test number, so number four and five, and this was using a more watery mix. Uh, and although this managed to pick up the fine details extremely well, it was really soft. Two days after it was cast, it would create this divot in the edge with just my finger. So I did my final test, number six, and this turned out good. Uh, there's very little air bubbles and it's managed to hold its form. Consequently, I'm ready to cast.